You know what I find strange? It seems that while Dragon is thriving, the road to the ISS has been riddled with challenges for everyone else lately. The cargo spacecraft SpaceX launched just yesterday to resupply the ISS is now encountering problems. Is there a curse following in Starliner's wake? Not to worry, SpaceX is pushing ahead with its crew missions to the ISS this year, highlighting an exciting new partnership between the US and India. And let's not forget Rocket Lab, which has just launched its latest Electron mission. So buckle up and dive into these thrilling developments in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Following the recent incident, Falcon 9 has resumed its pivotal role in the aerospace sector with renewed vigor. On August 4th at 11.02 AM EDT, SpaceX's Falcon 9 successfully launched from SLC-40, carrying Northrop Grumman's Cygnus spacecraft on its 21st cargo mission to the International Space Station designated NG-21. This mission is notable as it marks the second launch of Cygnus aboard Falcon 9 following the NG-20 flight earlier this year. This transition represents Northrop Grumman's shift from using the Antares rocket to Falcon 9 for Cygnus missions. Approximately eight minutes after launch, the first stage of the rocket executed a successful landing at Cape Canaveral's Landing Zone 1, achieving its 10th flight milestone. Meanwhile, the second stage continued its trajectory, and about 15 minutes after liftoff, the Cygnus spacecraft was deployed and proceeded on its mission to the ISS. The initial phase of the mission, with Falcon 9 at the helm, proceeded without issues, reinforcing SpaceX's reputation as a leading launch service provider. However, subsequent challenges arose with the Cygnus spacecraft. In a post-launch update, NASA officials reported, Shortly after launch, the spacecraft missed its first scheduled burn at 11.44 a.m. EDT due to a delay in burn sequencing. Known as the Targeted Altitude Burn, or TB1, it was rescheduled for 12.34 p.m. EDT but was aborted shortly after ignition due to a slightly low initial pressure state. At this time, there is no indication of any problem with the engine itself. Additionally, the mission faced delays as it was originally planned for August 3rd, but was rescheduled to August 4th due to adverse weather conditions. While issues during space missions are not uncommon, the situation with Cygnus is noteworthy. The spacecraft had successfully completed 20 previous cargo missions without incident. The recent problems occurring in the wake of Starliner's arrival at the ISS and other global challenges with rocket systems may suggest a broader trend of difficulties affecting space missions. This mission is also indirectly linked to the Starliner situation. The Cygnus spacecraft is carrying approximately 3,720 kilograms or 8,200 pounds of cargo which includes 1,560 kilos of vehicle hardware, 1,220 kilos of scientific investigations, and 1,021 kilograms of crew supplies. This cargo is crucial for the ISS, especially given the delay of the Starliner crew flight test, which has left astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams relying on the station's emergency reserve food supplies. For those skeptical of any intangible influences, the tangible impact of these delays on the ISS is evident. Regarding the Cygnus spacecraft, the pre-launch plan anticipated its arrival at the ISS on August 6th at approximately 3 in the morning Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Despite the recent thruster issues, NASA has confirmed that Cygnus remains at a safe altitude, and Northrop Grumman engineers are devising a new burn and trajectory plan. The team aims to achieve the spacecraft's original capture time, which is still scheduled for 3.10 a.m. EDT on August 6th. Upon arrival, Cygnus is expected to remain docked with the ISS until January 2025, after which it will depart and re-enter Earth's atmosphere. I sincerely hope that the mission proceeds smoothly, allowing the cargo to reach the ISS and meet the needs of the astronauts, including the two currently on the station due to Starliner's delays. Please share your best wishes for the mission in the comments section down below. Don't forget to also like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's developments. Now, regarding Boeing and the Starliner program, it may be time for a critical reassessment of this costly initiative. The ongoing issues with Starliner not only adversely affect Boeing, but also have broader implications for a range of related activities, both current and future. Initially conceived to support NASA in operating the International Space Station, or the ISS for short, Starliner has struggled to fulfill its intended role effectively. Instead, it has been a source of repeated complications and delays. 
The continued challenges faced by Starliner raise important questions about the feasibility and value of persisting with this program. The delays and technical difficulties have not only disrupted NASA's plans, but also have affected the broader spaceflight ecosystem, potentially impacting other missions and projects that rely on timely and reliable crew transport services. Given these persistent issues, it may be prudent for NASA to consider canceling the Starliner project and redirecting its focus and resources toward more reliable alternatives. The Dragon spacecraft developed by SpaceX has demonstrated consistent performance and reliability, making it a viable candidate to ensure the safe return and transport of astronauts, including Wilmore and Williams. Reevaluating Starliner's future and potentially phasing out this project could help mitigate further disruptions and optimize NASA's efforts to maintain a robust and effective human spaceflight program. Do you agree with this perspective? Let me know in the comments section down below. In addition to the Cygnus mission, there's exciting news from the ISS front. On the 2nd of August, the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, announced that two members of its astronaut corps, Shuban Shushukla and Prasant Balakrishnan Nair, will travel to the U.S. in the first week of August to commence training for their upcoming crewed Dragon mission to the ISS. Two Indian astronauts are set to begin their training at NASA's Johnson Space Center, with one of them scheduled to fly to the ISS on a forthcoming private astronaut mission. According to the Indian Space Research Organization, Shuban Shushukla has been assigned to the Axiom Space Axe 4 mission to the ISS, with Prasant Balakrishnan Nair designated as his backup. This announcement is among the first to confirm the participation of an Indian astronaut on the Axe 4 mission. On July 24th, Jitendra Singh, the Indian government minister responsible for space, confirmed in a written response to the Lok Sabha, the lower house of India's parliament, that Indian astronauts will soon commence training for the Axe 4 mission. Singh stated, ISRO is pursuing a joint mission with NASA to the ISS, in which one astronaut from ISRO will undertake space travel. This is a collaborative effort involving ISRO, NASA, and the private entity Axiom Space. ISRO has recently signed a spaceflight agreement with Axiom Space for this joint mission to the ISS. Currently, Axe 4 is scheduled for November this year. If all goes well, it will be the fourth crewed mission to the ISS and its fifth crewed mission overall of Dragon this year. Dragon launched Axe 3 and Crew 8, and they will launch Crew 9 and the Polaris Dawn that is not related to the ISS in the near future. Regarding cargo missions, Dragon launched a CRS-30 mission earlier this year and is planning two more missions in September and December. This shows Dragon's great contribution to the ISS, and it also reflects Dragon's superior performance over Starliner, with Starliner having yet to return in a crew test mission. Next, we turn to Rocket Lab which made significant progress last week with its Electron mission. At 12.39 p.m. EDT on August 2nd, an Electron rocket launched from Rocket Lab's New Zealand facility, successfully placing a high-resolution Earth-observing radar satellite into orbit. The satellite named Strix is a synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, developed by the Japanese company Synspective. Strix is designed to provide detailed imagery capable of detecting millimeter-level changes in the Earth's surface. Originally scheduled for July 30th, the mission titled Alpha 1 one for al was delayed by a few days due to adverse weather conditions. Despite the delay, the mission proceeded as planned. Approximately 57 minutes after liftoff, the Strix satellite was deployed into a circular orbit at an altitude of 337 miles or 543 kilometers above of Earth. This launch represents Rocket Lab's ninth mission of 2024 and their 51st mission overall, marking a notable achievement for the company. Additionally, Rocket Lab is advancing efforts to make the Electron rocket's first stage reusable. The company has previously recovered boosters from the ocean and even reflown an engine, demonstrating its commitment to increasing the reusability and efficiency of its launch systems. However, the mission Alpha 1 1 for Al did not include any planned activities related to booster recovery. Rocket Lab's mission description did not reference a booster recovery effort, and commentators did not discuss this possibility. Despite this, Rocket Lab is making substantial progress toward reaching its goal of 10 flights in 2024. At their current launch rate, averaging more than one mission per month, Rocket Lab surpasses many industry giants such as ULA and Blue Origin in launch frequency. Since its debut in 2017, the Electron rocket has seen a steady increase in launch frequency. In its inaugural year, Rocket Lab conducted just one mission. 
This number grew to three missions in 2018, six in 2019, seven in 2020, six in 2021, and nine in both 2022 and 2023. Rocket Lab is poised to surpass its previous records in 2024, with five months remaining in the year. It'll be interesting to see how they continue to push the boundaries in the space sector. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.